it over to Jason and Justin Pai to talk about the project registry provisioning. Hey team, thanks Luke. I'm just going to share my screen, get started here. Which one to share? So while Jason is sharing the screen, uh, I just want to remind you that the project registry is our new uh, automated process for the intake request. So all the requests that you submit right now through the GitHub issues to provision new namespaces, update contact information, change the project quota would be handled. Uh, by this new project registry in OpenShift 4. And ideally, there'll be a, a bunch of bots that will uh, do all this work automatically, freeing up uh, our platform admins for greater things. All right. Thanks, Alina. So you should be able to see my screen here. So what we did, um, OK, so the history. Uh, you've seen this form before, many of you have. We started OCP3, like the current version, a long time ago. And because of what we were capable of doing, we just onboarded a bunch of teams and more teams and more teams and more projects and over time lost track of who was on the platform. So the idea with OCP4 is we can do better. We're going to roll out, um, like Alina alluded to, um, more automation to do some of the, the grunt work of like the miscellaneous, um, well, I guess kind of like the more mindless tasks. They're very rote, very robotic uh, to free up the team for better things. So one of the first things we've tackled through the platform registry, which records who's on the platform, is namespace provisioning. So teams can come in, use this form, request a project name set, namespace set, and then some robots in the background will, will make the magic happen. Now we started off with typical agile style, like the MVP is just a form, right? Because our early adopters, that's, that's really all, the only thing they need is to be able to uh, like fill out a form. The next iteration, which is probably next sprint or maybe even starting this sprint if I've got some time, is to turn this into a dashboard where you can see all of your projects and all of the status of your namespace requests. So we'll start kind of aggregating all of your stuff in one place. And this will also show interesting information like maybe your vault um, repository, artifactory, your realm. So you can come here to find out all of uh, like information about all of your stuff on the platform. So let's get started with the demo. So I don't know if I'm still logged in here, so I'll refresh the screen. I am great. So project Y, this is cool. Uh, pick your ministry who owns it. That's one of the things we wanted to also uh, find out is like be able to group stuff for reporting purposes, not really our reporting purposes, but other ministries like to know like where's all my stuff on the platform. So by um, you know using an external system outside of Red Hat, this database will record that information. So we can we can let ministries do some reporting on that as they see fit. Which is So that's all I have to do. Uh, a little bit of feedback, it was successful. So now if I go to uh, this Git repo, what happens is a smart robot picks that up in the background and um, in a few seconds here, can take up to about 50 seconds. A uh, pull request will show up here, and I'll, uh, well, Jason, I'll, I'll explain. Go ahead, Alina. Is it where me or Justin would uh, approve a request for creating a new namespace? Yeah, I was just going to say that rather than build in our own like workflow management, we just leveraged what Git has to offer. So um, it's going to create a pull request. And if you're not familiar with the pull, let's refresh. It might be there already. There it is, project Y. So this pull request that gets created has the ability to do comments. So you can um, document uh, some conversations you might have had with the team before you do the approval. Like we've, we've told you about X, Y, and Z, and you told us about some things you need, and you can document it here. So 
Sure. Along with requests, you can do some documentation as to like why you did it or what, because if somebody's on holiday or on a flex day, you can always come here to find out like where things are in the workflow and get all, already offers this so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It um, creates these manifests and for those of you who maybe aren't particularly technical with OpenShift, like it's a multi-tenant, it means lots of people can share this thing. And the way you carve off a small slice is to essentially use these YAML files, which is what you're looking at here. And it just, it, it's how you kind of ask OpenShift to do things. And in this case, this manifest will ask it to provision some namespace sets. So that's your little slice of the, the shared environment. It'll have your quotas. So giving your CPU and memory resources, all this stuff goes in here. The idea behind keeping it in Git repo is, uh, well, what's called Git ops is that we could essentially replay all of the manifests in this repo and just rebuild the cluster. So if we wanted to rebuild the cluster in Azure one day, we could just rerun all of these manifests and the cluster would be rebuilt as it is on prem. So the namespace set uh, is just a bunch of uh, YAML files in this pull request. Once it gets merged in, uh, another workflow engine called Argo CD will pick it up and then go to the particular cluster because we're going to have multiple clusters. You'll be able to pick which one you need, like gold if you need disaster recovery or silver if you're like, that's not your, not, not what you need. And um, and yeah, so those manifests get put in here, stored, and once approved, the smart robot will pick it up. So again, that workflow is it goes through the registry a smart robot creates this pull request, a human intervenes to uh, approve it. Uh, once it gets merged, Argo CD is going to pick it up, go off, do the work, and then it'll come back to the registry and uh, indicate that the namespaces have been provisioned. And I'm current feature I'm working on at the moment is just some email notifications. So you're kind of notified as that workflow continues so you can see when your stuff's done. So that's it in a nutshell. Do you, uh, sorry, Justin here, Jason. Do you want to go ahead and uh, click merge? Uh, eventually sure. it'll be a, a an approved button, but for now merge works. And then if you head over to Theus, you should see the namespaces appear any second. It was exciting, eh? Give me another minute. There, they just appeared right there. So hopefully you can see 067905-dev prod test and tools. So my namespace set was just provisioned. So the only manual step um, that will be required by the platform services team in this process is for someone to click the approve button. And we do that um, just so we can have a little onboarding conversation with teams. So they know their expectations of the platform, and we know of the expect and they know our expectations is you need to have a DevOps specialist as part of your team who can you know manage your your stuff. And even when your project's done development, you still need that person. So we can have these human interactions, which I think is still important, and that's why we uh, we have a human involved in the process, and it's not completely. You know, automated end to end by robots. So okay. sounds, you, sounds like uh, Jason, you won't be able to automate me out of the job anytime soon. <laughs> nope. Awesome.